yourself going. Amen. He gave you the ability. Amen. And we ought to give him praise. That's the least we can do is praise him. Amen. I didn't go to a baseball game tonight. I didn't go to a soccer game, but I came to the house of God. And in the house of God, we are to give him praise. Oh, give God. just to put your umbrella away and get out your I, I was going to say cup but get out the bathtub and just say Lord fill me up hallelujah look at somebody next to you right now and ask them did you bring your bathtub need tonight did you bring your bathtub need tonight hallelujah 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 we're so glad to see all of our friends here with us tonight Hallelujah, and, and uh, we're going to, to, to give them a chance at the end of the service. We're so glad to have them. Hallelujah, but we have the wonderful privilege of having Apostle Al Fornis with us. Would you give him a good hand clap? <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and Pastor Charlie is with him. And uh, right now, the last name of Charlie gets away from me, but I call him Pastor. His last name's Charlie to me right now. First name, Pastor. Hallelujah. He, is, he has traveled with uh, Apostle Al for, was it 30 years? 20 years. Hallelujah. And we're so glad to have both of them, aren't we? Amen. Give them another good hand clap. And, and of course, we have a lot of visitors here with us tonight. But I want you to get your heart ready. Hallelujah. How many knows if you come hungry and reaching, you leave with what you needed? Hallelujah. Just that little woman with the issue of blood came ready to get her need met. And she left changed, healed, different. Hallelujah. So I'm going to ask the choir to sing one more song of worship. And then we're going to have the beautiful privilege of turning the service over to Apostle Al. Hallelujah. And I want you just to have your heart open and let God move in this sanctuary tonight. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Anointing in 
this sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. Come and lay down the burdens you have carried. For in the sanctuary, God is here. There is a sweet anointing in this sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. Come and lay down the burdens you have carried. For in the sanctuary, God is here. Lord, you can have your way with me. Lord, you can have your way with me. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. My privilege to introduce to you Apostle Al Fornis. Hallelujah. I met him in South Africa. I don't, I don't know who it was that prayed that they didn't want to go to South Africa. They would rather South Africa come to them. But somebody must have prayed that. Hallelujah. And uh, God has been so gracious to send us Apostle Al. Would you give him and the Lord a good hand clap as he comes. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Oh, come on, give God some praise. I want to thank your pastor for having an ear to hear the Spirit of God. Because truly, I always give God the glory. And I make sure that because of my salvation, that I can just tell Jesus, thank you for me being here in this precious state. It is a wonder why we cross paths or cross pollinate and I did this with your pastor and we had such a wonderful time in Cape Town. It was his first time, but my third time in Cape Town and how many know that right now is the most precious time historically, spiritually. Oh, I don't hear you, come on. So, I want you to know something, precious saints. God has a word to start off these days of spiritual open heaven. How many of you come to, to receive a miracle? Now, how many of you really came to receive a miracle? Amen? Well, praise God. Give God some praise. Amen? Hi, yeah. You may have a seat for a second. Hallelujah. But I thank the Lord that I am here and precious saints of God, sometimes you need to know where I've come from to know why I'm here today. And so since this is, say, the beginning of what's going to happen in these next, give or take, five crusades or services, say miracle. miracle. Okay. Say miracle. miracle. Well, to have miracles happen you need to be a participant in these five nights or four nights in one morning the bible tells me that that jesus died on the cross for us and he paid all the price for all diseases known and unknown to man someone say amen, amen. and so i have grabbed hold of that and i told god in a very young age, please, Lord, let me go throughout the world and use me so that they can see that we have a living God. And, and you might think, well, that's, that's just normal. But when you have a child from six months old to six years old, deformed, likened to a, a, little, a boy in a plastic bubble, fighting to breathe every second of my life for six years, and being ridiculed because I wasn't like the other boys. I was allergic to most all foods and most and allergic to most everything that is airborne. How then did I live? Say God. But God had a purpose in my life. No, you didn't get see see you. God had a purpose in my life. No matter what Satan tried to do. He couldn't do it because purpose had to prevail. For many are the ways of a man's heart, but God's purpose is going to prevail tonight through you. And so for six years, uh, my parents, I would be in the hospital two, three days a week for six years. I don't know about you, but that's a long time and many days. But God began to touched me in a way that no man or woman could ever do. He began to show me a love that only he can give. And one night, my parents were looking at television and Oral Roberts comes on television and said, if there be somebody that wants to believe with me in the power of agreement, then place your hand upon the screen as a point of contact. Now you might call it silly, but I call it spiritual. And they did this and we were raised Catholic. So they didn't know about that. All they knew that they needed to find something that works. So they laid their hands upon me and on the, uh, on the, on the screen, on the television, and they believed. So after the prayer, Dr. Earl Roberts says, and in amen, Jesus' name. 
They saw nothing different. I didn't change a bit. So they said, well, we tried. They took me back to my room, but two weeks later without them realizing, I have a scheduled appointment to go see the doctor at the General Hospital in Los Angeles. And the doctor comes out after x-raying me and measuring me and testing me and, and, and all those things, battery of tests that they have to do. And he comes out and says, Miss For Miss Miss For Mrs. Fornes, we don't understand why you would do a joke like this. Why would you bring another son of yours and act like it's the son that we've been taking care of? And so my mom doesn't understand it. She goes, I don't understand what you mean. And she says, this, the doctor says, and his name was Dr. Settlemile. How many know I have to know that? And I remember that. And he says, this is not the one we've been having stay alive for six years. And I'm going to tell you, I've told you before, if he reaches to the age of 12, that would be the miracle. Because he's not going to. My heart was expanded. My lungs were, were also, uh, my heart was enlarged. My lungs were expanded. My stomach was riddled because of all the medication. I was as thin as thin can be. Almost as it were malnutrition. If I just ran a f uh, three feet, four feet, I'd start wheezing. And then it'd start to go to double, from, from, from asthma to bronchitis or bronchitis to asthma to double pneumonia. And I was in. Now, some of you might think, well, big deal. It, oh, it was called my life. But so they said, no, 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 no. You don't understand, ma'am. Look at the charts. Look at the x-rays. His bones are back to normal. We tested him and he's allergic to nothing. How can this be this kid? Hallelujah. Come on, give God praises. Hallelujah. I stand here. Because of a God move and a God miracle. Come on, hallelujah. We have a God that's living. A God that is true. Hallelujah. And precious saints of God, I'm going to tell you something. I couldn't even breathe. You know, I couldn't even. You can have a seat again. Go on. I, I couldn't even. I'm telling you, I couldn't hardly eat. Uh, this is so, uh, Pastor, this is how bad it was. If I were to drink cold water, ice cold water, give me 20 minutes. And I'd start coughing, wheezing, and then it would go again. So my life was very hard. But I want to share this with you, Precious. I don't share this testimony so that you can go, oh. No, no, no. Because what God was doing in me, what Satan didn't know. See, God allowed me to go through these things so that I can develop passion and compassion for the sick. So that I can have a heart. See, people can pray, but there are others that can pray. There are some people that know how to prophesy, but there are others that prophesy. And what God has taught me to be real. Am I a doctor? I am. I have my credentials. You know, an apostle, they met people around the world call me a prophet's prophet. And I say, what you can call me is a servant of the most high God. Because title doesn't mean a thing. Presence means everything. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. It took another six years for me to realize I was healed. How many know what I'm talking about? You might say, well, you know, but, but, but it happened with Dr. Earl Roberts when you were six. Oh, it happened. And I was. But if you couldn't even lick a banana and wait seven minutes and start, you think I'm going to eat one now? So they had to say, oh, you can have that now. No, I can't. You can go outside without a sweater. Just go over there and run. I said, no, but they just cut the grass. I'm not going outside. It took another six years for me to realize that I was healed. Little by little. And I would say, oh, I could take a little. And, 
But it took another six years. But I also took an, it took that six years also to combine the emotional stress I had with my peers. Because I couldn't play football because I was afraid to, to die. I, I, I couldn't do that, the boy strong stuff at, when I was younger because I, I, did, I, I didn't want to just be embarrassed and fall down there and gasp me for air and then they have to bring the, the ambulance and take me. Do you understand what I'm saying? But because of that, there's a, oh, look at him, he's a weakling. Oh, look at him, he doesn't know what he's doing. You know, he's so dumb, he don't even know how to do a basket. You know what I'm saying. But God had to heal my emotions. And that took till 12 years old. Say 12 years old. But when it was 12 years old. See, God doesn't believe in numerology, but he does believe in numbers. So I want you to remember the numbers that I'm giving you. At 12, I was what? Completely healed. 12. And at 14 years old, one in four is five, 14, is when I audibly heard the Lord speak to me. I'm vacuuming my parents' home, you know, because we had chores, and I was raised in a very strict uh, home, and I'm, I'm vacuuming, and I hear audibly right here the Lord go, my son, Shabia, and he goes, my son, for I have elected you to go throughout the world, and through you I will heal my people. You will be like a doctor, but you will not go to school for it. And power shall I give upon your hands. And so I said, okay. So my mom was having her breakfast coffee. And I, I go to her. I said, mom, I think I want to be a, a doctor. And she says, you know, son, I believe this is good for you. Because with all that you've gone through, I could see why you want to give back. That is precious, my son. And mother, you know. I want to travel the world and heal so many people. Son, that is wonderful. That's admirable. I think this is good. You know, you're, you're, I am proud right now for what you're speaking. And mother, you know what? I don't believe I'm going to go to school for it either. <laughs> Some mother looked at me and said, get back to work. Get back to work. Because... But it's all biblical because the Bible says that spiritual things to non-spiritual people is nothing more than foolishness. Say foolishness. So I pray that we don't have non-spiritual people here tonight. You're like, Hallelujah. I pray to God that that spirit of religiosity is not in this house tonight. Or the spirit of legalism is not in this house tonight. Because you have an inherent power within you. And what God has in you, I need. And what God has gifted me with, you need. So together we can go to a level, not, not a level like we, what, what pastors talk about. I'm talking a dimension tonight. Somebody give God praise. So I'm sharing this with you so you can kind of know where I'm coming from and then we're going to just fly. But then, I'm not born again. I get married at the age of 20, my wife 18. I've known her since I was nine and she's seven. And she prophesied, not knowing she did, that she told her mama, see that guy right there? I want to marry him at seven. She said, I want to marry that tall and handsome young man right there. Well, not everything happened. <laughs> but God knew who he needed to come together with. Because my wife, who was not here today, you know her. She's precious. Uh, uh, she pastors, co-pastors with me. Theophany Ministries International in the city of Corona, uh, suburb of Los Angeles, California. But we would go to parties and uh, precious saints of God, how many of you were ever in the world? Okay. All of you. Well, praise you, Jesus. You know, somebody said, oh, I'm, I don't even know. I, I don't know. No, you know. Okay. We're going to be real today. Okay. Honestly, I could come out here and I could become that doctor. I really could. But 
But how many know that doing that doesn't always get God to move? So I want to be real with you and I pray that you be real with me, okay? So when I was 20 to 33 years old, I did my thing. Now notice Noah's asking what the thing is because you already know you have one too. <laughs> and so, you know, I'd go to parties and, and we, I would have a few liquids because I was thirsty. No, look, now you, you know, you know, and, and, and I would, I would go there and, and, and people would, would, started to know things I did like, Hey, the, you're the guy that has ESP. And I said, well, you, uh, you can call it that. He goes, no, no, we heard that you, you know, you, you have like ESP. So then I'm a little, I think we're having an earthquake at that time. So I said, yeah, I do. They said, well, then why don't you do me? And I said, you got it. <sighs> now, uh, uh, there's going to be a reason for this. And so I said, think of three things and I'm going to tell you what you're thinking, which is now called word of knowledge. So, so I looked at him and, he, and, and he's going, oh, come on. And everyone's around me going, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you know how you do. And so I looked at him and I said, just close your eyes and think each one, one at a time. So he does and he's like this. And I'm like this. And I said, for the Lord to, uh, no, I said, no, I didn't say the Lord because I didn't know him like that. I said, uh, I'm getting, yes, orange rinds. You're thinking of orange rinds. He goes, no. <laughs> You are fake. It wasn't orange rinds. They're orange peelings. So I said, that is orange rinds. Peelings is rinds. Oh, okay. That's one. Then I, I started thinking again. I said, oh, oh the, the second thing you th thought about is it's called the, the, the cow gate. He goes, is that the front of a locomotive? You know, the, I said, yes, that's what it is. And the third was an old a step, step, stepping rail that you step on to get onto a car, you know. And I told him that after the third time he left, the, he left the party. He says, this man, you know, he's of the devil. And I'm going to tell you something, precious saints of God. I was not born again yet. See, because God says he knew me <laughs> before I knew him. He knew me and he already put a thumbprint of purpose and destiny in me. And that's why Satan tried to take me out so that I would not go through the world and do what God has commissioned me to do. So now it happened at 12. I mean at 12. It happened at 14, 5. That's called commission. I was commissioned by God. And then at 33 years old. Now I was going. I was doing. I I, I was a, for, role, or starring role in Broadway show. Now we're not talking off Broadway. Broadway. I was, sing, I was singing in lounges uh, next to people that were making millions and millions of dollars. I was coming to the place. Do you understand? I was coming to a place of notoriety in the sense of celebrity, like celebrity stuff. But how many know that even if you think you can go this way, God's going to do what? Take it that way. So what happens is this, and I'm sharing this with you because I want these five days to be understood what I had to pay. Yes, yes, yes. So at 33 years old, precious saints of God, I'm thinking I'm going to be another star. I, I go to Hollywood. I'm, I'm with the, you know, at the time, the Sonny and Cher people. I'm, I'm with all these, these stars and we're doing all kinds of things. And it's kind of really kind of neat. But God said, no. I didn't know he said no. He just said no. With shutting doors and doing it this way all that to tell you watch this at 33 years old my grandmother passes away who was like my god a powerful woman of god and she'd always tell me why don't you sing for jesus and i would look at her i said i, I just did a gig you know at the, at the john wayne airport hotel excuse me and i said grandma if you want you do it and she looked at me and goes really 
but she she implanted in me and seeded in me Jesus but when she died I began to live because I no longer had her to go to God I had to go myself and at 30, 33 years old I asked him into my heart now what, what how old a month later at 33 years old I have a visitation for two and a half hours with Jesus now really I didn't have it he came to me so it wasn't something I did it's what he decided two and a half hours and he said these words to me he says my son I have waited for such a time as this I am now going to separate you sanctify you and consecrate you that you will have the authority to be under my glory I want to share this with you. I don't walk with an anointing. I walk under his glory. You will, you will see it in Jesus' name. That visitation lasted two and a half hours and he spoke so many things to me. And he anointed me to such a level that the one that was with me saw the Shekinah glory so thick you couldn't see through it all over my house. And it would come down on me for two hours straight. And I told the Lord, give me more, Father. Please just give me more. And he says, my son, I can't give you even an ounce more. For if I gave that to you, you will physically explode. And how many know that God knows more than me? And if he says, I can't, I said, that's fine. Leave it there. But all that to tell you, God has purpose for you today. I didn't come here, but, he, but been, I've been sent, not just invited. And God has something great in these next five occasions for you. I want you to believe with me in Jesus' name. And what I like to do is minister in song. And I'm going to tell you why I do this. And then I want to get to the word. And I'll tell you why. Because every time I sing, I tell, the, I tell Satan, you thought you had me. Because I couldn't even, I would talk like this. And, and, and God allowed me to have a voice for him give God praise My tribute. thank you Jesus how can I say thanks for the things you have done for me things so undeserved yet you prove your love to me the voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude all that I am and ever hope to be I owe it all to thee Let me live mm. 
my life Let it be pleasing, Lord, to Thee And if I should gain any praise Let it go to Calvary To God Tell them this. Just let me live my life. Oh, let it be pleasing, Lord, to thee. And if I should gaze any praise. Oh, let it go, let it go. Oh, my God, Lord Jesus. To Calvary. Are you ready? Let me hear you. To God. Come on. Be the glory. Come on. To God. Come on, let me hear you. Be the glory. praise hallelujah thank you Jesus glory to God in the highest thank you Jesus Went on in my life No matter what I've gone through Yes I give God all my glory Yes For it is His Satan thought he had me but he doesn't know, hallelujah. Greater is he that's in me, yes, than he that's in the world. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
I'm going to get what is mine Cause I can see I'm going to get what is mine Cause I believe yes. How many are going to get yours tonight? Hallelujah. There's just one more song I want to sing before I go to the word. It's You're My Everything. Do you have that one? You know, I met this precious man in, in, in Africa and, and, and I didn't know he could play and I guess he didn't know I could sing. So we just got together and we just started having a good time, you know? This is a, this is a song the Lord gave me and, and, and it's where you start to know that and I'm going to give you a revelation. It's a revelatory and word and all of us are in Christ and we know Jesus. So, so many years, Pastor, I've known Jesus. And so I've always known who he was in me. But in these last few years, I've learned who I was in him. Because when you start to realize who you are and why you are, boldness starts to come forth and the glory cloud begins to be on, above you and you can lay hands on anything. Even if it's a puppy, they get healed. Oh, come on now. You might think I'm kidding you. I'll give you a story later. You're my everything. You're my everything. You're my prince of peace. My counselor, my everything, you're my everything, you're my everything, you're my prince of peace, my counselor, my everything, you're my hope and dream, you're my hope and dream, you're my deliverer, my Savior, my hope and dream, yeah, yeah, you're my everything, shut up, Baba Kuz. with the Lord right now. You're my prince of peace, my counselor, my He is worthy. He is worthy. 
glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may have a seat, precious saints of God. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God Almighty. To sing a song by God's move, to say, you are my everything. What does it mean to say you're my everything? That means everything. Even when I don't want to preach, I preach. Even if I don't feel good, I'll sing. Even if I've had a discussion that was kind of strong, I have to let that go and say, but I will worship you anyway. God has taught me, precious saints of God, to always choose for him no matter what the situation or the circumstance. It's not an easy place, but I'll tell you, it's a blessed place. Because all you have to do is when you're in that level, you begin to speak things and they come, they're decreed and they happen. Are you ready? Are you understanding me? I don't hear you. Thank you, Jesus. I wrote some things down that I want to share with you. And what I'm doing tonight, Pastor, is I'm just, I, I'm, I'm bringing a foundation so that it will just go higher as we go. How many already feel the Spirit of God? Ooh. Precious saints, I want to share with you that in this hour, where this is, I know we, we have Prophet William in the house, praise God. I saw you also in Cape Town and praise God. All these people that I have met. But the time that we are in, precious saints, is a time like never before. We are seeing that what God is doing, he is beginning to show himself of what he spoke in the days of old for today. And what I want to share with you today is that it is not by coincidence that I am here today, nor is it your coincidence that you are too. And I'm going to share with you, Pastor, what's going to happen. We're not going to have enough room. And people are going to be lining up because of what God is going to do. I spoke last July and I gave this to Cape Town as well as the world and I said we are just about to experience an open heaven and they had a, a revival of open heaven but I had spoke this in July and what God was speaking was that we are right God is tired the way church has evolved somebody better say amen God is tired of seeing the way bureaucracy and the politics have come upon every church that are trying to expand themselves called the empire but not expanding the kingdom of God so I know as an apostle precious saints of God God has called me to go out and to do what to to speak of those things that I see that no man sees and then the prophets begin to come in and they begin to speak about what man has not seen, but what the, but the apostle has spearheaded or gone on front to begin to speak. Someone say amen. 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 I'm telling you there's a tsunami wave of glory that is about to fall upon Louisiana. Yes. Now, you know, I don't know about you, but I've heard a basketball go into a hoop that people screamed it out. Yes. This is about you tonight. I was crossing the Mississippi this afternoon and you know I'm the top I look at everything for God to speak and he told me he says are you ready he says even though the river looks muddy the river has its value and even right now if you feel that in your life things are not the way as clear as they should be God says there's value in it because I have not allowed you to see all because faith must still be considered Shah. For there is a move that is just about to take place here in Louisiana as well as throughout the world. There are churches that are just about, that are big churches that are just about to close 
because the tsunami wave of glory is going to be so heavy that those that are not reaching for the more are going to drown in what they don't know. And what God is going to do is he's going to take the people that have been screaming out more, Father, I just want more of you. Lord, I don't want the same thing just like Moses said. Moses said, I saw the burning bush. It was good. That's exciting. But Father, I want to see your face. He wanted what? More. Say more. more. He wanted what? More. He wanted more. The, the churches today, we're not looking at the church any longer. We're looking at the bride of Christ that are looking for the more of her husband. I don't want to live in the land of mediocrity. No, it's, I don't want, well, it's good enough. No, I don't want what's good enough. I want more than enough. I don't want to just be blessed. I want to be a blesser. I want to be able to go and demonstrate the power of God to such a point where people that are agnostic or people that do not believe in God at all will say, well, I don't know what you got, but what you got, I need. When you see a tumor slide off of someone's body, you don't have to do nothing but say, but I know a God. When you see someone come off and out of a wheelchair, you don't have to go, oh, look at this. All you got to say is, but I know a God. Eventually that person will say, but tell me what God that is. Oh, I can tell you. See, the hour is, watch this, the hour is an hour of demonstration. There's a lot of churches, now I'm not downing this, but there's a lot of churches that know the word, but don't live by the word. Or they talk about all these miracles, but they say something like, oh, I remember, I remember in 1952 it was. Sister Sally, she got healed from her ankle. She, so she did. She couldn't walk, and then one day she just, whoa, right out of church. She was, whoa, we still talking about that. If you still talking about Sister Sally, it's because nothing else has happened since. And this is not the day to talk about yesterday. It's today to talk about tomorrow. Come on, people. We got to start talking about tomorrow. Hallelujah. You see, there is a particular turning point or points of history when windows open up from heaven and begins to pour out that which a measure that people know not of. You see, God localizes his presence over the life of an individual, a church, a city, or a nation. And the outpouring becomes so serendipity to where people think they're going to get this, but they get the more. Come on, all people. Some people call it revival. I call it presence. Woo, we're going to get some revival. No, we don't get revival. You just stay in his presence. In his presence. Come on. In his presence, there is no measure. People tell me, you know, you're kind of a weird kind of man. I am. And I you know you don't have to. I know. But it's because I love the Lord so much. And I know that I'm very confident of his word and his demonstration that I just continue to. Desha, I move in it. And I tell people, you can have it too, but you're going to have to pay a price. Oh, but you don't know what I'm going through. I don't need to know. Because God does know and just line up to his word. And I'll tell you, precious saints of God. We are right now in the most historical, and I know Prophet William and Pastor... And all the ministers here, I know and I know that inside of you, in these last few weeks, there is a stirring up, a stirring up like never before. Why? Because the enemy knows that generals are just about to come up. And I'm not talking one with doctorates. I'm not talking those that have gone to school. I'm talking those that have raised their hands up to God and begin to, to, to seek. Watch this. Because the Bible tells me 
in every, 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 every time I read about somebody, the Bible tells me that they were there, what for? For they could reach up to heaven and pull heaven down for somebody. And see, shame. So right now, watch this. Don't look at yourself. Don't think about yourself. Let's raise up. Let's raise our hand and pull down heaven for someone next to you, for somebody else, and see what God's doing for you. Somebody say Amen. Hallelujah. I love it when God speaks. There are special moments of time when heaven touches earth. I believe these next five services, heaven is going to come down to earth. Am I saying I'm better? No. Am I saying I'm the one? No. What I'm saying is it's called the particular time. This is the time. For such a time as this. This is the time that I'm going to get what is mine. Tell somebody, I'm going to get what is mine today, tonight. Now, now you got you to gotta say it like you mean it. You know, it's like, I think I'm going to get what is mine. I might. I'm not, you know, I'm not sure. That ain't the way. You got to say, I'm going to get what is mine. I'm going to get what is mine tonight. Why? Because I believe it and I'm going to see it. Give God some praise. Woo! Shalabababakosara. I love it when we hear in the Bible and read it where that every time when God opened heaven power was always following. Even when Jesus said your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now God's will is to have Louisiana come to a place that is shaking the nation. If you say, but I, I haven't been, pay, I, I can't pay my bills. Right now, don't look at your bill. Look at presents. Yes. But I've got cancer. Oh, wait a second. Don't look at cancer. Look at his presence. Seek for his presence. For where his presence is. There. Only there. Moses tells God, God, I saw the burning bush. It was good. You did. That was powerful. But I know that there's more. So what does he say? Let me see your face. What did God tell him? Take your shoes off. Because Disha, for there is a place. He says, take your shoes off. Don't tread. Watch this. Don't tread where man has tread. Don't do what others have done. Come to this presence. He says, take your shoes off and step right here. When you step here, then place your face upon the crevice of a rock. In other words, place it on presence. Place it on Jesus. And when he did that, it, say instantly. Instantly, he saw his glory. Every time we get ourselves in the seeking of presence, it is just like Moses who saw God's glory. And God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Somebody better say amen. Are you all enjoying? Give the Lord a hand praise. Some of you might say, what is an open heaven? We're going to learn today. An open heaven can be described as an unhindered manifestation in the earth of all that heaven is of God's own presence and glory. It means, watch this, 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 I love it. It means the natural laws can be temporarily or permanently suspended as heaven breaks in. Signs and wonders, miracles and healings, revelations and unusual manifestations of power begin to occur. Come on now, people. Begin to occur. All of a sudden, what is so supernatural becomes natural. 
All of a sudden, when you walk into the church, you say, well, I know something's going to happen. Woo! I know it's not going to be the same thing. Every service begins to take its own personality. Why? Because presence of God. You no longer care if Sister Lala said something. Who cares? I'm looking for presence, not Miss Lala. But you don't know, I wasn't invited to the barbecue. And they know I like ribs. You don't care as long as you have presence. Our life is too short to worry about a barbecue. But you don't know what my mama did. Uh, you don't know how she treated me she loved the other one but not me so what <laughs> that's so temporary but you got a, you got a heaven waiting for you get into presence somebody get come on say get into presence hallelujah thank you Jesus I think I'm getting through the varying degrees of Watch this. Poverty and sickness and disease are eliminated. In the place of presence that what I'm speaking of, you're going to see that there are those people. Now, you might call me crazy, but there are people that have pantries that are so empty. When you go back home, they'll be filled up. Oh, you're, you know, no, they're, 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 you're going to see that some of you that maybe if your pantry is, it only has cornflakes and maybe three chips that were left. But see, God is the God that knows how to replenish supernaturally. This is all in the Bible. And what I'm trying to tell you is that you today with me, all of us together, we can go to that dimension. Hallelujah. You, 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 I remember once I went to a, a, a multi-million uh, millionaire and he... He wanted me to pray for his two Pekingese dogs. Now you think, you got to be kidding me. Jesus still loves all animals. Yes, he does. And so I went there and I didn't know I was going to do that. He just said, why don't you come, Apostle, I, I heard about you. Why don't you come? We're going to have a dinner party. And there was this most gorgeous, you know, just lavish place. And I'm there and I'm praying for all these people. They're all on the floor. You know, after dinner, they were just all on the floor. Crying, he goes, did you tell him? But did you tell him about my life? Because he just told me everything. No, but it was God. But watch this. So at the end, watch this. They had faith for themselves, but they had no faith for the dog. So they said, they brought these two pickanies. Can you pray for my two dogs? We love them like our children. Don't laugh. You know, you love yours too. And so I said, of course I'll pray for them. I didn't know what was wrong with them. How many know that was a good thing? Because, you know, when you know it, it's like, oh, God. Oh, God. So I said, okay, so what's wrong with this one? He goes, you see right here on the back of his neck, it has a big, like, a half of a, an orange, a big orange, half of it, just right here, tumor. So I said, in the name of Jesus, I come again. And I put my hand on it. In Jesus' name, I command it to. And it just disappeared. Before the whole people. They were going like, oh my God. Now we don't have to talk about Sister Sally. So then, I, well, at that time, I have to be like this. Yes, in Jesus' mighty name. But in me, I was going, oh my God. Oh, come on, let's be real. So then, I prayed for the other dog. They said, oh, and this dog don't have no legs in the back. They're just all wobbly noodles. And I'm going, oh, my God. I said, of course. Bring the dog over here. And I prayed. And, and these two, they were just like this, like noodles. So I get them both. You know. And I start praying, Father, in the name of Jesus, I command Father God for these legs. Right? Jesus, put her down. Put her down. And so they're looking at me and I said, they're, they're all like this, like this, watch, like this. <laughs> they just saw a half of orange sized tumor disappear and now they're going to mock. How many know we do that? Yes. Okay, you could believe God for the, what he's done, but you can't believe God for what he's going to do. Yes. Oh, you, did you get that? Yes. And so I said these words. Now this is, again, this is 
revelatory. God gave me this. Because in me, I was going, okay. You know, you know, thank you, Jesus. You know, but the Lord spoke to me, says, my son, tell him these words. And I told him this. For this dog is also healed. Believe the things that are not as though they were. And they're all like this. What a cheap shot. No, come on. What a cheap shot. Oh, oh, okay. So everybody that doesn't get healed, believe the things that are not as though they were and they shall be. But then the Lord tells me, but give them a but. I said, but by tomorrow morning, this dog will walk and run. And they're looking at it goes, oh, really? But he's not doing it now. I said, that's because this is it. This is revelatory. Because his mind in the natural, the supernatural, he has not caught up to. So, come in the morning, they're upstairs, big mansion, they're upstairs, asleep, and they hear, rah, 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 small dogs, and they're running back and forth, bruh, bruh, bruh. and she wakes up and she goes, oh my God, and when they open the door, these two pig and knee dogs are running back and forth with, and you can't even go up the stairs with no noodle, right? She's completely healed, completely healed, right? Oh, come on, give God praise. So, let me share this with you. So, this is, the, this is the teaching. How then was she healed? It was because, watch this, this is so good. Because when she was asleep, the doggy was asleep, her mind then believed her and saw her what? Running. So when she woke up, she went, well, I don't know if she really did that, but... She could have and went because she knew in her dream she could. Come on, people. Faith without works is dead. Some of you have your miracle right in front of you, but you can't believe. Well, I got to feel it to believe it. No, you don't. You just have to believe. So if a doll can do it, People, when they start hearing this, people all over the world start calling me to pray for their dogs and their horses. Now, I'm telling you the truth. It's the truth. So, this man from up north, watch this. He's so wealthy that he had a Starbucks put, a Starbucks put in his acreage. Because his wife, like, in the barn, of, because his wife likes Starbucks. That wealthy. How many know wealth does not bring you healing? That's right. That's right. No money does that. So, so. So he calls me, he goes, uh, Pastor Al, I heard that, you know, you, you kind of like, you know, I mean, you're kind of like a Dr. Doodle, right? <laughs> and I said, I'm really not, you know? He goes, no, but I heard that, you know, you, that you heal. I said, no, Jesus does, and Jesus loves even the animals. He goes, well, okay, I got a big one for you. I said, you do? And it's not kind of challenging. He goes, I mean, it's really big for me because my wife is not even talking to me because her, her horse is dying. Now, I don't know about, maybe you guys do, but I don't know that much about horses and stomachs, but they say when they eat a lot of sand and stuff, they can get like a colic or they can get a, 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 something wrong with their intestines and die. And most often, they die. So, I just said, thank God I don't know much. So I said, Father, I said, don't you worry, your, your horse is going to live. But he's scheduled for surgery and they say that it, it's like a, the percentage was very low, very, very low. I said, I don't care about the percentage because I know, uh, because what? I, I want to hear it. Come on. Remember that saying, because we're going to go throughout the five days with that. Because we what? Know we know a God. Okay. And so I prayed. I said, you know what? He goes, he's going to go through surgery. But the dogs are going to realize that the surgery is going to take like minutes instead of hours. You're going to see. Da, 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 right. He calls it back two days. He says, the doctors don't understand this. They did the surgery. They did it really quickly. And right now, he's in the backyard running all over the place like he never had surgery. Why? Because I know a God. Come on, because I know a God. Hallelujah. Let me give you one more and then we're going to do something. I remember one time, my, my son who was 16 years old, I was, uh, I was going up north to minister and my son uh, for, for, was becoming ill with his stomach and my wife... My wife uh, 
She, she says, there's something wrong. He goes, you know, I just feel nauseous. Well, he, us not knowing or she not knowing that he had been sick for six days with this nauseous in his stomach and pain. Well, they take him to the doctor after, and, and, and when they take him to the doctor, they find out that he has, uh, he has uh, appendicitis. But what they don't understand is why he's alive because it had bursted for six days. Now, how many know after six hours you're dead? So my wife called me up and goes, honey, you need to come back. I said, no, no, no. Let me do God and let God do my son. So I went there and preached. But the, day, the minute I said, and amen and God bless you, I, I got in my car and went straight down to the hospital. And this is exactly what happened. At the moment that the appendix bursted, three abscess appeared out of nowhere, opened up, took all the poison and closed and waited for the doctor to go in and take them out. Now, we know a God. Come on, but I know a God that knows how to do that. Somebody say amen. Thank you, Jesus. Tell somebody, I'm going to have my miracle. I want you to know, precious saints of God, that these, the season that we're right now in is an open heaven. It is already started, but the month of April. The month of April is the month of dispensation and the month of breakthrough. If you've been waiting years, don't wait any longer because it's this month. Someone say amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus. I know we speak about in the Bible about stairway to heaven. In this first revelation, Jesus read Nathaniel's mail and seen him in the spirit under the fig tree he revealed his inner nature as a man without guile despite being stunned by this amazing revelation Jesus promised him you shall see greater things than that you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the son of man this is found in John 1 50 and 51 now God says see it's only God that knows how to open man does not open heaven so when you hear it in Pensacola, oh my God, we were interceding for 22 days. That is an open heaven. Oh, I'm going to fast until I'm real skinny. That is an open heaven. Heaven opens when God decrees it, when God wants it, when he starts speaking to the prophets and to the apostles and to those who have an ear to hear the spirit of God. That is when you start to see heaven seep its reign and you start to see things start taking place so supernaturally in Jesus mighty name. Hallelujah. I hope you're getting this precious saints of God. Thank you, Jesus. Or even as Jesus is referring to here to Jacob a dream in Genesis 28. Falling asleep, Jacob saw a ladder resting on the earth with its top reaching into heaven, a stairway to heaven. By this means, the angels of God were ascending and descending. Jesus is now the means by which heaven and earth communicate. Through him, heaven comes to earth. Ministering spirits are sent to men below, bearing the commands and comforts of our heavenly Father. And in turn, bear, they bear the prayers and praises of the saints back to heaven. Do you realize right now we have the opportunity? We have the, we have the ability to have this place tonight to begin to have an open heaven as we have a ladder as it was in the days of old and then God can begin to listen to every petition every disease every circumstance come on now people and and begin to touch his people tonight hallelujah thank you Jesus wow I believe that God is having angelic visitations, dreams and visions and prophecies. This is the characteristic of an open heaven. We're going to see in these five services, open heaven. Did you hear what I said? Open heaven. You're going to see legs grow. Come on now. Does that really happen? Yes. Oh, it does. If you want, go to YouTube. You'll, you'll, you'll see. Can God bring a man that's seconds of dying to come back? Or death 
to come back alive? Yes. But didn't he do that in didn't he do that in the days of old what we read? How many of you sometimes can't believe that? Be honest. Like you believe it for them, but not, not today. Yes. I can't hear you. Not today, right? But what if I told you that God has allowed me to do it? No. <laughs> yes. It's because I told the Lord, Lord, I read the Smith Wigglesworth. I, you know, I, I, I read the Papa Hagen. When I was, li, li, you know, little, young in the Lord, I read everything. Oh, really? I can? Oh, my God. I will. I, I did. I read always and kept on reading and kept on reading and praying and reading. You see, it don't come easy. And so he says, you want it, right? You're going to have to pay. Oh, oh, Jesus doesn't have, Jesus already paid the price. He paid the price for salvation. But when you, but you have to pay the price to, watch this, to be the holder of his gifts. So, um, do you remember that song, Saturame? So this young girl, I'm having a good time with you. I, I thank you so much for being, are you all having a good time? Is it still a, so, so there was this young late girl comes to me and says, at the time, Pastor, I, I know that God uses the miracles and stuff and my, my grandfather's dying. You know, they, he's been two weeks already in, in a strong, very deep uh, uh, coma and his body is already accepting death. You all understand what that means? Log jaw, uh, uh, all the inside, just shutting. And they said they only gave him minutes, minutes when I got there. So, you know, Pastor, how we do. How, you know, how, how many of you know how to pray? You know? Father, in the name of Jesus, I come against this. I'll break his, you know, I, spirit of death, come out. I did everything. 20 minutes later, the Lord audibly speaks to me. And he says, are you finished? No, this is true. Say, it's true. I felt this little because I felt oh my god did I go with my might did I go with my with with my power did I go with pride and he says no my son but I'll do it the way I want to do it remember that I will do it the way I want to do it so then I said okay, okay I'm sorry and he tells me sing a song to me I said I'm praying for a dead man and they think I'm crazy and I want to sing to this dead man they're gonna call 911 they're gonna call you know in the in the so then he tells me and sing a song that he would understand and I said well what does he speak he goes Spanish and I'm you know and I want you to know that I didn't speak Spanish God touched my tongue and I began to speak instantly. And so I said, I was being smart. Well, Lord, if you want me to sing in Spanish, then you need to do something because I don't have any Spanish songs. <laughs> All of a sudden, whew, okay, I have one now. It, it was just, it's just, so I want, I want you to hear with this song. This is the song. And I'll tell you at the end what happened. Satúrame, Señor, con tu espíritu. Satúrame, Señor, con tu espíritu. Y déjame sentir el fuego de tu amor aquí en mi corazón Señor y déjame sentir el fuego de tu amor aquí en mi corazón Señor Saturate me, Lord, with your spirit. Saturate me, Lord, 
with your spirit and let me feel the fire of your burning love down deep in my heart my Lord hey, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love you Lord yes I sentir el fuego de tu amor aquí en mi corazón se aleluya llamaba papá cosa for 20 minutes I was singing forgetting the circumstance forgetting the situation only worshiping God and then I felt after 20 minutes of I just started singing and I was moving in the room oh I love you I will never, never leave you, yes, Saturo me. And I felt a hand go like this. And I opened my eyes because I got lost in him. And the man that was I would say almost dead was sitting up smiling and weeping and he was then let go out of the hospital in mi corazón Señor y déjame 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 sentir Señor tu corazón I want I want more of you Hallelujah. Come on, people, give the Lord a hand, praise. He lived because I believe the word of God. Hallelujah, Bosara. I believe what God was speaking. I believed it in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Someone say, but I know a God. When Jacob awoke from seeing the heavens open, and a lot of the angels ascending and descending, his response was, as I believe, wow! 
He said, surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. He called the place Bethel. That's we find in Genesis 28, verse 16 through 19. Now watch this. We're going to have this place be the gateway. This is going to be the place. You're going to see it. This place called presence. Say theophany. You know, Pastor, my my ministry is called Theophany Ministries International. Theophany means the visible presence of the Lord or the tangible presence of the Lord. And you want to know how I knew theophany? I didn't know it because I knew it. I knew it because God audibly spoke to me as I sang years ago. And he says, you are in the place called theophany. You know, Pastor, I just want to keep more and and, and just flow. And then we're going to continue this tomorrow. Is that good? Is that good? Because we know. So if 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 I call you out or if I point at you or if I say there's someone with this, don't just go, me, is it me, is it me? You know, you know it's you. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. But the Lord has shown me this, precious saint. There's someone in here that's been having a chronic back problem. Who are you? It's, it's in the lower back. You're in here. Don't be fearful. Is it you? Come up this way. Do you mind if I go down? Hey. What is your name? Hubert Kelly. Hubert Kelly. Uh, Hubert? That's a beautiful name. I have a friend that... That's named Hubert. We went to school together. You're not him, right? I don't believe. <laughs> What's going on with your back? I have a lot of trouble crossing the lower part of my back. Are you ready to be healed right now? Mm-hmm. Now, did you hear what I just said? He's going to be healed. Did you hear what I said? He's going to be healed. Because? Because? Father, I just give you praise right now. Let's find someone to help you. Find some, another person to help you. Do you have an... Uh, uh, there you, they're right there. Right there. Pastor Charlie, there's someone to help you. He de come ascendir. What's your name? Regina. And what's going on with your back? Uh, ruptured disc. Is it? How long have you had it? 16 years. Don't you think it's time? I'm ready. How many of you believe it's time? If anybody pushes you, that ain't God. You know, you know, there's some people, and I fall, I go, whoa, did you see that? No, no, no. I, when I saw you, push me down. If it's God, the power will do it itself. How's your back, precious brother? How's your back, Hubert? It's feeling better. Okay, do you have any more pain? No, I don't have none right now. Oh, whoa, whoa. teaching, teaching. When you say, I don't have, do you have any pain? No, I don't. But I don't have any pain, what? Right now, you just opened and gave license to Satan to come back. I know what I'm talking about. So I want you to say, I nullify those words. You have no more pain? No more pain. Do something you couldn't do. Do something. If you could, could you, look at this. Do you have any pain? Give God praise. Come on. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. So you've had these. You've had pain for 16 years. You have back pain? What's your name? Elsie. Elsie, how long have you had your back pain? Oh, about 10 years. Don't you think that's enough? Been way too long. What is your name? Shay. And Shay, what's going on with you? When I get up in the morning, I have to move real slow. My back hurts really bad. I have to be real careful when I sit. But I haven't been to the doctor. I've just been speaking against it. So. Are you ready? Now, I'm going to show you corporate. This is called corporate anointing glory. When I tell you, I want you to hold hands. When I tell you, 
When I tell you to hold hands. When I tell you to hold hands. <sighs> That's okay. Give me, give me all your stuff. That's okay. No, it's okay. Sha ba ba. How many know? How many know something going to happen? It's going to happen. When I count to three, I want you to hold hands. When I count to three, it's going to be a lightning bolt that's going to fall on you, and it's going to be His healing power. I'm telling you, and also your stomach. God's going to heal your stomach area in Jesus, because you've had been having trouble with your stomach. Isn't that true? Yes. Yes. Okay. One. Two, three. Now, sha. There it goes, sha. There it goes, there. Sha. There it is, there. I don't want you to think. Just receive right now. There it is. All pain to leave. There you go. Jesus. Move, move, move. Move, move, move. Move your back. Go right ahead. Move your back. Do you have any more pain? What's that? No. Do something you couldn't do. Or just standing, you would get the pain? And you have no pain? I have no pain. Oh, come on, people. Come on, people. Give God praise. How's your back? It's good. No pain? No pain. Come on, give God praise. How's your back? Good. No pain? No, no pain. Got two discs out of line, and I broke the end of my backbone twice. And so you're okay now? Do something you couldn't do. Go right ahead. Do something you couldn't do. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Isn't this wonderful? Let me see that your beautiful face. Isn't this wonderful? Wonderful. 16 years. 16. And now you have no pain. I have no pain. The truth. <laughs> now, I didn't pay you, right? No. Just want you to know that because somebody's thing. <laughs> but I, I have a word for you. For the Lord told me to tell you this. He says, daughter, for you have been waiting, especially for the last three years, for a breakthrough but what I'm going to do for you he says your heart has been worried your heart has been silent and I am right now going to place a whirlwind in you and around you and he told me to tell you that visitations shall come more frequently And the Lord says, at the age of 10 years old, was a crucial, pivotal time in your life because a situation, a fork in the road in the family at 10. You might say, well, it didn't, it didn't touch me, but it did because the seed was, been, was planted in you and tonight it comes off. You understand what I'm saying? Sometimes you might think I'm being general and, and I'm not. It's just it's none of your business. You understand? But the Lord, the, is that right on so far? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. The Lord says, from that point on, uh, there was an independence that began to fall upon you. And you began to have a, called a survival tool. You began to be who you wanted to be and you would not allow somebody to make you something you were not. God says, this has been your way of success. Amen. But the Lord told me to tell you this. He says, my daughter, come away with me. Come away with me. Because I'm going to give you instructions. And he says, begin to write. Begin to write. Because what I'm giving you will be for, for so many, a multitude. There is experiences that you've never shared. 
and, and I'm just going to leave it there. But experiences you've never shared. And God says, use the third party and share it. Because there's people going through what you went through. And they need to be delivered. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Give me a big hug. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So how's your back? Is your back good? Isn't that something? Now, all these people come with the back, right? Oh, Shabbat. And there's more in Jesus' name. Oh, yes. Hi. Is that what you mean? <laughs> Pastor Charlie, please help me. Thank you so much. God bless you. Yeah, you just come. He'll, he'll direct you. You know, I just got something for this. What is your, um, what is your connection? you get ready because you've been going up a mountain and you're tired and God says he's going to lift you off that mountain and you're going to go into uh, uh, Mount Zion God's going to heal hear these words there's, a, there's heaviness on your shoulders that's a heaviness on your shoulders come this way quickly quickly There's a heaviness on your shoulders. And God says, be, he says, be not weary, my son, for I have come in such a time as this for you. He says, you are going to, watch this, you are going to experience me. Dasha. And the Lord told me to tell you that he is removing many things from your mind. Because sometimes your mind plays tricks on you. You understand that? Yes, I do. And there's sometimes you think this and you say, Lord, why am I thinking these? Now, I want you to hear this. There are some times you think you're going out of your mind. And the Lord says, it's because Satan is trying to make you believe that the things that you have been thinking are yours. They're fiery darts of the enemy. And that you're wanting to take ownership of that which is not you. Are you understanding? He says to tell you this, he's, I, I, I see your feet. He's healing your feet. And, 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 and uh, your your. I'll, I'll, I call it your your lower intestines, your colon area. God is healing you in Jesus' name. Do you understand that? Is that right on for you? Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Raise your hands right now. And Mama, I'm going to tell you this. This man is going to soar in the spirit. God loves this man and God loves his worship. But God is going to soar, bring him up to another level. You have been praying for breakthrough in him. God's going to mend your hearts together. Not that you're not one, but you're going to mend your hearts together because it hasn't been in the closest it could be. And the Lord has come in to con bring confusion in the relationship. Confusion. And sometimes anger comes and then you find out you don't know what you're arguing about. The enemy is coming. To try to distort, to distract, because there's a ministry here, a strong ministry. His, there it is again. You could take more. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Take more, take more. Thank you, Jesus. Is that right on? Yes. I break all, every time he wants to become silent and shut off. I break that off right now in Jesus' name. And God's, God said that you will be an orator. You will communicate. Jesus' mighty name. Pastors, what is he to you? Pastors, friends? Or? 
I see a business contract. I see a contract. You hear what I just said? A contract. Things are going to start coming your way. Divine favor is coming upon you, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Because I'm going to share this with you. You've kind of been in a down and out. You've been in a valley. A strong valley. God says he's plucking you out tonight. He's plucking you out. <laughs> Shay! There, there. Shay! Take it off. Take it off. Shay! Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. What is your name? Lloyd. Lloyd. Lloyd? Lloyd, so um, you came up here because of your back? Yes, sir. How long have you had this back problem? About five years. How did you have it? What happened? Tell me. It's a degenerate disc. But we know, But what? But what? I'm going to share this with you. God is also going to, God is also healing your, your urinary tract. Uh, you understand that? He's healing that in Jesus' name. Uh, it's okay. That's good. See, sometimes people don't tell me, but I could tell them. That's how you know it's God. Okay. A grown man wouldn't start to weep just because he's amused. You understand what I mean by that? Father God, right now in Jesus' name, I pray that you heal him there. Heal it now. Heal it now. And also his In Jesus' name. Can I give you more? For the Lord told me to tell you also that he says even as you were growing up, you sought and you sought for a father. You sought for a father and a father figure. And you've gone many places and many, many, many streets, many areas, many ways to try to find the love of a father. Let it out. If you need to let it out, let it out. And God told me to tell you that tonight he's going to, he's going to hold your heart and massage it because abuse has been about you. Since the age of seven. You understand? Man of God, you understand? Yes. And God told me to tell you tonight's the night that you will be completely delivered. Completely delivered. Shh. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. These arms are the arms of a father to you. It's to bring you peace when there is not a That abuse was my first. Oh, come on, give God some praise. Come on, Sharama Baba Kusara. How many know people? It might mean nothing to you, but it could be his life right there. And you might say, come on now, you know, give him the time. Because God will give you time. What is your name? Adam. Adam, what's going on with you? Well, last six months, uh, my, my bottom of my back's been stiff. And it, it, it don't, it's not stiff after I move it for, after I'm working all day. But this pain started today on the left side of my back. And uh, I stop and it gets stiff and it hurts again. And for the Lord told me to tell you, God's going to heal you. But the Lord told me to tell you that sh you already felt that, didn't you? Go through you. Shut up. The Lord told me to tell you, you know what it is to be betrayed. For you are a loyal man. But you know what it is to have a friend betray. 
Are you understanding me? Throughout your life, you've had this over and over and over again. You have friendships and then they betray you. They, 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 you trust them, they mistrust you. Are you understanding? And God told me to tell you, he says, from this day forward, he's going to pull you out of the pit. Because it seems as though that you look for a job, you look for a door, you open, you understand what I'm saying? Or, and, and, and God says, this is the hour that I am going to open every door that has been shut to you. And I'm going to tell you why. For the Lord says, there's, this, there's a tall man uh, uh, three years ago that spoke against you and spoke curse on you. I come against that witchcraft off of you in Jesus' mighty, matchless name. And, and I'm going to share with you how much I know about you. Hear this. And I'm going to say it in a way that they won't understand, but you've got to be clean with me on this. There are times at night that you've had f for many years now, struggled and battled. And it has to do with your mind. Do you understand me? Am I right on? Yes, sir. God says tonight the struggle is over. Oh, come on, hallelujah. Come on, people, hallelujah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, hey, hey. What is your name? Deborah. Deborah, are you the, the wife of this precious man, my friend right over there? Hallelujah. What's going on with you? Um, I've got a, a very bad lower back um, problem and I've got a third vertebra in the middle of my back is, um, is damaged. God's going to heal it right now. S stand up, stand up. He's not finished. Not finished. Somebody, somebody, say, Shay. Okay, watch this precious sense of us. Shay, the undality. In Jesus, there it goes. There, there, there. Shamba, ba, ba. There's your struggle leaving you right there. Take it in Jesus' name. How long have you had this problem? Uh, many, many years. I don't know where. I, I was, a, I was an abused woman, so um, I think it came from that. Raise your hand. I keep on seeing the age of 15. The age of 15. Lord, I, I, I come against those things that came against her at the age of 15. You understand that? It's her, let it out. Go right ahead. Let it out. Shut up, up, up. Okay, I come against it. I come against. I come against every memory of. I come against Father God the torment of. In Jesus' mighty name, Hallelujah. I break its power off right now. In Jesus' mighty name, And this is what the Lord tells me, Prophet, Prophet of God. How many other were husbands? You, uh, uh, husbands were prophets were apostles but God told me to tell you this is why in the relationship there are times you know her and there's times you don't God is going to heal you because you have fallow ground in you you have a pro you, you, you hold your heart protected do you understand and there's times that you battle depression you battle depression. I'm not saying you're taking pills and you're that level, but deep in you, God's going to remove and bring you joy like you've not experienced. Do you hear me? Great work shall come about you and you will be healed complete. From 15, God is going to heal that. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I said, "I'm not going to be caught up." Oh, come up this way. Come on. You want something? Come on. How you feeling? Come here. Come here. How you feeling now? Great. 
Great. No, no pain. No pain. And 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 what I spoke to you and uh, the mind and stuff is that true? Yes, sir. God is good, isn't He? Give God praise. How you do there, woman of God? How's your back? Good. Any more pain? I want you to move. Go right ahead and move it. I know God. Is that good? Give me one big hug. God bless you, woman of God. Amen. Isn't this exciting? Hallelujah. Come this way. What is your name? Karen. Karen, what's going on with you? I have two bulging discs in a um, sciatic nerve problem. Okay, are, you, are, you, are you ready to be healed? Yes. You, know, you know what happens? They start seeing things happen, and all of a sudden, like, oh, 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 I want it, right? There. There it is. There it is. Now you say, I didn't push her, right? It's the Spirit of God. It's the Spirit of God. How you doing? <laughs> Why are you now laughing? <laughs> Nah. Huh? You're drunk. Him, you're gonna get it. Sha, there it is. How you feeling? What? A little sore. That's all. Right, no more pain. No. Come over here on this side. Do something you couldn't do. something you couldn't do how's that feels good give God praise Helen there's somebody that has an ear problem who is it someone's having an ear problem come on up quickly come up here he needs an overhaul there's but come up and get it but there's someone else that has it come on pastor are we okay so far why are you laughing <laughs> <laughs> what ear is it? It's constant ringing. Jesus name. In Jesus name. Jesus Jesus. Remove them now, Father. Take it out now in Jesus mighty name. There it is. Come this way. You're right here. What is your name? Martha. Martha. Oh my goodness, you're beautiful. Amen. But I'm married. I'm not. She goes, but I'm not. You see, prophets, you should have prophesied over me on this one here. Pastor, you, I'm glad you could see this. This here? Joy, joy, <laughs> joy. Just touch him. Sha, masara. In Jesus' name, there it goes. We can be so dignified. 
but watch Jesus do some. Shake me, sir. God is going to heal your heart. God's going to heal your heart. What's your name? Juanita. Juanita, what's going on with you? Well, I have a bad back. A uh, uh, bulging disc, pinching the sciatic nerve. <laughs> what's going on with you? Uh, what's your name? Shirley. Shirley, what's going on with you? I had uh, back surgery. Uh, it'll be seven years in June, and I uh, have two titanium steel rods in my back. Surgery didn't, wasn't successful. But God will be, because? What is your name? Lou. And Lou, what's going on with you? I broke my back on a missions trip about five years ago. God also wants to heal your liver in Jesus' name. Do you understand that? Now, did you tell me about that? God is going to, it's okay. God's going to heal you of your liver. Jesus. Come this way, precious one. God's going to heal your heart. Wow. What's going on with your heart? I was in a car wreck and they did a CAT scan and I'm supposed to go see the cardiologist Wednesday and they said get right in. There's some um, calcium deposits around the main artery. Can I tell you something? Yes. God is going to heal you. Because remember, I always tell people, did you tell me or did I tell you? No. Raise your hands. My God, my God, my God. Where is the woman that was here with the ear? She left? Oh. You got mad at me because I'm married? Is that it? How's your, how's your ear? I can hear better out of this. Okay, then you, you close that ear. And then when I say, can you hear me? You say yes, right? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Come on again. For the Lord is extending your life and there's restoration in your body right now in Jesus' name. Come on, give God praise for that. Yes. 
How are you feeling? Are you okay now? Ah, yeah, yeah, yes. Were you not able to do something? I mean, would, would you get winded if you ran and stuff like that? You'd be okay? Hallelujah. For the Lord told me to tell you that, that no, that he has not skipped you and that, and that he's not, not far away. He's right there with you. What I see, hear these words. I see a business transaction. I see handshakes. And God told me to tell you, he says, I am right there to make sure they don't do it again. You understand that? They will never do that again to you. You will not lose a thing, but gain everything. I see interest. I see investment. And I see a new thing coming upon you very quickly. A door is open. Do you understand me? Is that right on so far? Absolutely. Give God praise. How are you feeling? Great. How's your back? I didn't think about it. Is that a new dance? You know, people tell me, how come, Apostle, you know, you have such a, you know, you, you move in this, this anointing, this glory, and how come you can just be so, like, humorous and stuff? Can I tell you why? Because God never told me to change my personality. He told me to change my character. Are we, are we, we're done? Is it time? Oh. <laughs> You've been drinking. I want you to know that, you're, that, that God is going to send you to other nations. And you thought it was over. Your, 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 your liver is fine. When you go back, they're going to say it's fine. But I break it off of you. I come against it in Jesus' name. I'm going to tell you what you've had in your body. And it's been for a while. You have had parasites and bacteria. I break them off of you. I come against them in Jesus' mighty name. This is why there are sometimes you eat something that you've eaten before and all of a sudden it turns your stomach. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because the enemy is trying to hold you captive. But I break every assignment of the enemy and you are completely set free today in Jesus' mighty name. Shit. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Is that right on for you? Give God praise. You know, Precious says, if you, if you realize, are you okay? Are you okay, yeah? Stand them up. Stand them up. Watch this, Precious says. You know, the Bible says, if you find someone to agree with, watch what happens. I want, I want you to give me your hand, okay? Are you ready? I'll tell you when. Okay, ready? Give me. Now! Isn't that something? She didn't tell me that she had a liver problem. I told her. How many know that, that I love that? Because then you could say, well, wait a second. That's got to be God. How's your ears? It's not, it's better? Then come over here. We don't want better. No, you, I think you're lying. I, th I think you just want me to blow in your ear or something. I don't know. How's your ears? How's your ears? Sha. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Father. There, there, there. There, there, there. Man, I need for you to go around, uh, surround them. Men, men, men. Come and surround quickly, quickly. Surround. Help, help. Surround them, surround them. Watch what happens. Ah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Turn it up, Lord. <laughs> the joy of the Lord shall be my strength. 
And laughter is like a medicine even to the marrows of the bone. Are you ready? Take it! <laughs> Can I have you two come this way? Just watch them, watch them. They're drunks. They're the church drinkers. You are a man of order. You have fought for what is true. And sometimes they th said you were losing because you stood on truth. Does that make sense? It does make sense. God told me to tell you at the age of 12. At the age of 12 was the time where you stood on truth. Your friends could not be with you because they didn't like that you couldn't lie. But God told me to tell you, my son, for you have fared well. And expect a visitation, the Lord says, because I'm going to visit you. Because you've been crying out to God, God, I want more. God, I want more. God, I want more. <sighs> yes, yay! There, there. You are an intercessor. You pray in your own way. And do not let anyone tell you that you are not hitting heaven. Are you ladies okay? You, how are you feeling? Good. I'm supposed to have a shot in my spine. <laughs> Isn't that funny? You don't need one. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because you just got a new liver. Yeah. So. And why are you laughing? It just feels good. <laughs> um, um, no pain? How are you feeling? I do have uh they did tell me i had some cyst in my kidney and uh -huh. kidney stones uh -huh. and i am feeling that uh -huh. and i have <laughs> okay i want you to put your hand on come over here put your hand on your on your stomach teaching i will not touch her stomach why she's a woman but father in jesus name i give you praise honor and glory and i command this hernia to leave i pray right now uh, uh, how many remember when in, in C Cape Town there was a man that had a big do you remember that? big one like this and it was stick, sticking like this and I put my hand and I massaged it and it went and it left thank you Jesus healing, healing healing, healing healing, healing hey! there, shake and Father God I command that stone to leave and dissipate. I command, Father God, that her kidney to be healed. <sighs> Give God praise. Sir, come up here quickly. Expect a visitation for the Lord says it will be supernatural, supernatural, supernatural. Amen? There's something you lost. God says in, in the past, not, uh, quite a long you, you lost but God says I am going to bring it back but it's going to be multiplied and I'll tell you what it is sometimes we can trust people lend people help people and they don't do what he's that what was agreed you understand that I do and God says watch what I do you think it's over watch what I do You're like, how did he know? I don't, but the Lord does. Are you okay? You, another drunk man. <laughs> Pastor Frank, I don't know what you got in this place, but there's some drunk people here. Huh. Are you enjoying this? <laughs> sure. 
You know, when Jesus walked and if I could only touch the hem of his garment, do you realize that you possess the same thing? If you are in his presence, all you have to do is touch the hem. God is calling you, my son, for the day is going to come that you will preach the word of God. But he's breaking everything that has tried to hold you captive. Are you understanding me? Don't look, don't look of what they have done. For sometimes resentment holds you very tightly. And your, your heart has been hurt many times. But God told me to tell you, tonight's the night of your freedom. Tonight's the night of your, watch this, your graduation, your promotion. There it is there. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just receive it. It's not by might, not by power, just by His Spirit. There it is. Someone has the neck, neck, come quickly. Some a neck problem. Come, come, you have a neck problem? What's going on? Hold on, here, watch him. I've got two titanium discs in my neck, and I woke up this morning and I couldn't move my neck. Really? Pain's gone as you've been preaching. This <laughs> <laughs> There it goes. There. It's gone. What's that? It's gone. Give God praise. What's going on with your neck? Neck, skin disc. What's your, what's, your, what's your name? Jimmy. Jimmy. I break off the words that came against you at 17 years old. Is that true? Yes. And the Lord told me to tell you, he says he had to hold you. Because no one knows the words that were spoken that were so detrimental to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? You don't have to stop crying. Go right ahead. This, this has to come out. You felt ashamed. You felt embarrassed. And you thought your world was all ready to an end. You understand? You know what God told me to tell you? That he wanted to hug you right now because he's going to have it released. Are you ready? <laughs> Was everything I said right on? Do you hear what I'm saying, people? This is this this is good. This is God. He is going to heal your stomach. And I'm going to tell you what's going on with your stomach. The Lord told me to tell you that right at the pit of your stomach, there is a hiatal hernia. Amen? Is that true? Yes. See, I'm not the doctor, but the doctor is in me. Oh, <laughs> But what I see is that late at night there's time that you have to wake up quickly because it, you're, you're choking and it closes your throat and you're going, <gasps> is that true? That's correct, yes. You've been having this for quite a while. But God told me to tell you today, eat anything you wish for it will never happen again. God is also going to heal, watch these words, your colon. It's all right. 
It might be you next. He's going to heal your colon. What? It's correct. God is always correct, huh? I know a God. Because what? I know a God. Hallelujah. There are times that you'd rather be in the background and not noticed. And that has been one of your downfalls because even in business, things pass you by and positions pass you by. It's okay. I, you know, I don't get it. It's, it's, and God says, not again. Never again. <sighs> Come on, give God praise. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, yeah. What are we going to sing? You are my God, you are my King. Is that good? Yeah, you did. You did. I forgot. There is a legacy on you, in you, and through you, and around you. But God says, be not fearful, my son, for I have you in my hand. You will not be like your father. For God is going to give you a double portion of what your father has. For the Lord said that you will travel in many nations and many countries. And that you will have healing hands. And a strong prophetic mouthpiece. Now I don't know if anyone knows this. But I need to share this with you. In school. Abuse was very strong. And words were spoken that were very unkind. You didn't want to speak this to your mother or dad. But there were many times, many years. Of of. A bullying. Do you understand? Yes. Is that true? Very true. But God says there's going to be a time where they're going to see you on television. They're going to see you successful. Because God says you stood the test. There is an academia or academic that God has gifted you with. God says use it. No more excuses. Daddy, do you understand that? Is that right on? No excuses. God doesn't want you to say, I cannot, I, I can't do, do you understand? No. For this is the hour that you will see, my son. That when I begin to speak to you and you will hear me, he says. There are things that you will be able to speak and others that you will not. But tonight's the night of your anointing for the greater. Raise your hands. Come on and give God praise. Why are you crying? How come you're crying? <laughs> you know when you, I'll tell you what it is. You, you, you know when you know. That's where this happens. Because I didn't come here to do a show. I came here to have heaven fall down for you. How many have you seen get healed? Notice that I didn't do, I didn't do a lot of hoopla. All I said was Jesus. Jesus. Someone's having ovary, ovary problems strong. Someone's having a cycle and ovary problem. God wants to heal you right now. And it's a generational curse. Who is it? Thank you, Jesus. If, if you're part of it, come on here. How many know that if, if it's God's calling on one, you can get the overflow? What is your name? Renee. And your name? Alana. And your name? Ashlyn. And, and, and what's been going on with you? A lot of pain. Pain. Pain and cramping. Sometimes I can't get up and walk. 
pain this morning. I woke up and I had to stay in a ball. I couldn't move. And then I drove from a friend's house home and I laid on the couch feeling nauseous and just pain, cramping all day. See, the Lord tells me that we can lift up anything. And we're not under a curse. We're not under a law. We're under grace. So you three don't have to, you three don't have to have this pain like this. What is your name? Crystal. Crystal. And you have the same thing? Wow. I'm, hey, Pastor Charlie, we're going to need s- some more men, please. You know, it's not easy moving, having, Pastor Charlie's a powerful man of God. And you should see when we have large, large, large crusade, how many ushers are running all over the place because it gets very exciting, you know? Father, we just thank you for these four. We pray the anointing. There it goes. The anointing. Now, hold hands now. Hold hands now. Take it in Jesus' name. There it is. There it is. There. Take it, take it, take it, take it. There, Jesus, touch, touch those areas right now in Jesus' name. And we all agree and say, amen. Amen. Ladies, it's done. It's done. Watch. How you feeling? Lord, no pain. How you feeling? You're perfectly fine. How you feeling? Great. No pain. No pain. How you feeling? No pain. Come on, people. You got to give God praise. Hallelujah. God has called you out. He has spoken to you at the age of seven years old. For the Lord told me to tell you, he says, daughter, daughter, come away with me. Let not depression, let not anxiety and panic attack hold you captive. You understanding me? Is that true? Yes, sir. Uh, come against it right now in Jesus' name. This happened to your family. It goes generation to generation to generation. Hallelujah. But God says it stops with you. <sighs> You're feeling well now, huh? No pain? No pain. At all? At all. It's a done deal. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. Do you see all the healings that are happening? We have... Four more services. How many of you are going to bring people to come? How many of you are going to help to bring a lot of people to come that you know that are going to be guaranteed healing in Jesus' name? What's my key? I mean, to see. Oh, we didn't. Then let's not. more so much more of you I need more so much more more so much more of you I need more so much more for God has ignited you in your ministry as you've been seeing it for the last eight days is changing God says my son I'm going to pull you away from words that were prophesied that were not from me he says you shall see that I am going to begin to supply and support what you are in need of to do his will and his purpose I see hear these words I see you in Australia but soon 
and it's not God says don't go back to the same places over again he says because I have I have a new river that's going to flow because you have the the prophetic gift that's strong but God says there you're I'm going to open up new venue new way and you shall be known to walk in and they fall under the power for the words to come forth so precise that they will know that it's God. I see changes, changes, many changes. Shandaba Sudo. And I come against the person, and it's just recently, that spoke against you. Wow. I break, I break those words off of you. I'm going to tell you what it is. I come against the words of greed. I'll break that off right now. That's not you. And Father God, I just pray right now that he will not be alone. And that you will bring those that will support, Father, those that will hold his hand. He will not ever travel alone again. Jesus, my name. Jesus, Jesus. Australia. For the Lord told me that and I hear these words, okay? The Lord told me to tell you this. He says, for your finances in the days past, there's times that you have and then many times that you have not. There are times of struggle. And God says, he says, it was only because I like, like I did with Cyrus, I held your right hand. It just wasn't the time. Because you've even cried and says, Lord, why is it that they can do this and they have this and this and I, I do everything and give everything and yet I come back with nothing in my pockets. God says those days are over. For the Lord says you will see that the, you will, God is going to bring you those that will support you. Those that will su support you not only financially but protection. Jesus, Jesus. I'm going to share this with you. I see you more in, around the world than I do you in Africa. I want you to know that. I do. I see you in Australia. Remember that. I see you in Australia. New Zealand. Shape. <laughs> Come on, people. Give God praise. I want you to sing this with me. It goes like this. More. So much more of you. I want more. I want more. So much more. Ready? So much more. Sing with me again. Hallelujah. More. More. So much more. So much more of you. I need more. I need more. I want to hear you. Come on. So much more. So much more. Now let it be a cry. Come on. Let me hear you. Come on. More. More. Keep on singing that. I'm going to do the harmony. More. More. For God says that this church shall be a lighthouse. But this will not be only the only one. God told me to tell you that though you want to hold a legacy. 
You want to embrace what your mama did. But God says now is the time that you're going to rise up to do what I do through you. Prophecy is in you. Words of knowledge is in you. Your preaching and your teaching shall soar to another level. And God told me to tell you your heart is right and ripe. And I shared this with you in Cape Town for the Lord reminded me and said, you will no longer just be here for you will fly all over the world because you're international. And God is bringing many in this house. He's bringing the affluent, the abase and the abound will be in this place. Somebody right now, I'm telling you, somebody right now is hearing your name. And you're going to see, precious one, that as God has been so pleased with your heart, there is a river that is flowing on this altar. Come on, hallelujah. More, so much more, so much more of you. Come on, let me hear you. More, yeah, yeah, yeah. So much more. Now let's all stand and sing that as we close. Come on, hallelujah. I'll give it to you. more. Come on, let me hear you. Shady and the Lady of Yes, yes, yes. More. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So much more one more time come on hallelujah come on people more so much more of you I need more yeah, 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 yeah. so much let's lift up our hands and close your eyes right now and sing that to the Lord. Come on with all your heart. Come on. Come on, Shabi. Come on, people. Keep it up. Come on, Sarandalaniyarabakoya. So much more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, oh, come on, hallelujah. So much more of you. I want more. So much more. Watch me by the internet right now. Why don't you just go ahead and tell him, Lord, I want more of you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Continue to sing. Lord, I want more of you. Hallelujah. Let the heavens hear your voice. Say, I want more of you, Lord. Lord, I want more of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In this hour that we're in, so many are going other directions. Say, Lord, I want more of you. Lord, I want more of you. More of you. One last time. Oh, 